And please join me also in welcoming Simon Richter up here to the podium with me. It was Simon's vision. It was Simon's vision and energy that have brought this lecture series together. And Simon, would you please uh, say a few words? A few words. Thank you very much, Paul. So let me start with a shout out to the SAS media team standing here before us, some of them, <laughs> who have been working behind the scenes to make the climate lectures a real media event. With creativity and brilliant teamwork, they've amplified our voices and made us visible to a much larger audience. I also want to thank Dean Paul Snigowski for his enthusiastic support. I mean, what a great dean. <clears throat> I want you to know, this is not the sort of thing deans normally do. But today, not only has Paul hosted this, uh, the climate lectures, we've also had Dean Steiner with us. And I know from private conversations that other deans are also on our side. There's a lesson in that. It's time to rethink what we understand by community. The climate emergency compels us to speak out and to act. When we do, we discover there are others who share our concerns and frustrations, and not just those we count among our friends and already know. We give each other courage because we know it's on us to act, to address other potential members, and to increase our community and our influence. I remember the anti-apartheid activism of the 1980s. The deans were not with us then. The 1.5 minute climate lectures have been an effort in community building. We're a community of scholars from a variety of disciplines dispersed across campus. But we've come together to speak about the climate emergency in ways that show where we stand and how we feel. At times, President Gutman, Provost Pritchett, and Chairman Cohen may have thought that they were our secret audience. They weren't. We hope they've watched the videos and participated in discussions about them, but they really weren't our main target. We have been aiming at everyone in the Penn community to sound the alarm about the climate emergency, to share knowledge about global warming and its manifold impacts, and to motivate the kind of unprecedented action the IPCC, uh, IPCC special reports, and that includes the report on the critical state of the ocean released today, call for. We want you to understand you have more leverage and more community than you know. Your climate action is not limited to recycling, taking SEPTA, drinking tap water, and flying less. All good things, don't get me wrong. But take a good look at the communities you're a part of, your dorm, your department, your clubs, your committees, and units of governance, all the institutions that make up the university. Each of these is a lever a lever to greater change at a higher level. We've heard many calls to action in the climate lectures today as well. Ban plastic bottles, reduce air transportation, switch to renewables, refocus investments, bridge the green gap in West Philly, introduce a climate requirement, establish a climate action center, be cognizant of the connection between ecological grief and student wellness. These are components of the unprecedented change we can make happen. At the Designing the Green New Deal conference two weeks ago, David Ross, climate journalist and climate center fellow said, we've screwed ourselves so badly, we've screwed ourselves into a position of clarity. It's no longer difficult to know what needs to be done and needs to be said. The more we say and the more we do, the more allies we'll find, the greater our community will become, and the more we'll accomplish. As we pursue these goals, we'll take Penn with us. I'm not hopeful with respect to the future, but what the climate emergency gives all of us is an opportunity to live our lives with an intensity of purpose and in community with others in ways that our society typically doesn't allow. There is a restless and eager energy in this place, here at the foot of Ben Franklin's statue, just waiting to be unleashed. We will not let this energy dwindle. We will turn Penn into a climate action leader, whether Penn likes it or not. <laughs>